This week I'm headed to Big Sky Country, Montana, and Glacier National Park. This is a hike that I did 15 years ago. It was an incredible hike. The scenery was spectacular, lots of great views, the trails were excellent, and I can't wait to return to Glacier's North Circle. This week I'm hiking with my buddy John with an H, Stuart Howe, check him out on YouTube's How's the Hike, and Stuart's buddy Scott. Together, the four of us are headed out on what promises to be an exciting week-long adventure. But first, I have to pick up our hiking permit in the adjoining Waterton Lakes National Park. And then we'll take a boat ride down Upper Waterton Lake to the tiny outpost called Goat Haunt, where we'll start our hike. Well, we have arrived. This is the boat dock at Goat Haunt. Stuart made an interesting comment. The flags are backwards. Canada is on your left, the United States is on the right. Stuart, John and I are now hiking the, I don't know what you'd call this, the Lakeshore Trail, for lack of a better word. And we'll be at the ranger station, the Goat Haunt Outpost, shortly. So this is the ranger station. So on we go. We have a nice short walk. We have about four or five kilometers in along the Waterton Trail. And then we're going to hang a right and go up to Kootenai Lake and camp there for tonight. Here's the first official sign of the trail and all kinds of stuff to worry about. This is the typical trail right now that we're walking on. This is the floor of the Waterton Valley and fairly soon we're going to make the turn to the side trail to Kootenai Lake and not very long, I think four or five hundred meters and then we'll be there. This shows you the root structure of these big tall trees and basically it's just one big ball. Not very deep, fairly wide, but obviously in this case not wide enough. And here we are, just a short little walk in and camp. So that's the eating area and we're just waiting on our freeze-dried meal to rehydrate. Ten minutes. I'm just going to take you over here to the lake. So hopefully we're going to see some moose sometime in the next little while. It's a beautiful spot. I've been here several times and it's really nice. Well, it was a pretty easy day today. Short walk in from Goat Haunt. Beautiful spot here at Kootenai Lake. Unfortunately, the moose have not arrived. Not yet, anyway. We may hear them through the night. Talk to you in the morning. Well, good morning. It's day two. We're at Kootenai Lake campsite. And today, a fairly easy morning. We're going to hike back to the main trail. And then we're going to hike up the Waterton Valley Trail for a bit. And then we're going to make the climb up to 50 mountains. So it'll be a bit of a slog this afternoon. And uh, no moose last evening, so that was disappointing. But we're here next Sunday night. So our last night on the hike, we're back here. So hopefully we'll see some moose. So John's behind the camera at the moment. Stuart's probably... <laughs> there he is. Stuart is uh, taking care of business down the way and Scott is here with me. So sooner or later we're going to get the four of us on camera together. Honestly, there are four in this hike. So uh, yeah, it should be a good day. Hopefully the weather will cooperate. Yeah, this one's a little bit fresher. We saw some further back that was quite dry. Looks like an old avalanche slope that we're walking through, and this is really good habitat for grizzly bears. Lots of lush plants in here. Here's the trail sign junction. This is the junction that we're going to come down to on our second last day. We'll come down from Stony Indian Pass and Upper Glens Lake Campground. Here's a nice spot we've just taken. A short break here. It's a backcountry ranger station. Here's a good vantage point of the Waterton Valley as it continues south and we're climbing up now toward 50 Mountain. Well, we had a short break back there for lunch. Now we're continuing the climb. Mm -hmm. 
If you look closely on the map, there's a heart rate symbol for a good reason. Well, we're just about at the top for the day, thankfully. And this is the valley that we've come up. The trail came over there. Scott and Stewart are right behind me. This is a tough slog. First half of the afternoon, but it'll feel good to be at the top and then a nice easy walk down into 50 Mountain Campsite. We're on the downhill stretch now to 50 Mountain Campground and I think it's called 50 Mountain because if you look really closely, you might be able to count 50 mountains. This is pretty easy walking through these high grasslands. And up there. Well, I'm going to do a wrap on day two. The weather we're not sure about. The forecast for tomorrow is 2 Celsius, which is about 35 Fahrenheit and 30, milli 30 millimeters of rain. So it's going to be a wet, cold day tomorrow, which is unfortunate because it's such a nice walk from here to Granite Park. Anyway, we had a pretty good day today. Uh, tough walk this afternoon up to 50 Mountain. Uh, but we're here, we're having early supper. A uh, little bit of light, light rain right now. Uh, a bear was spotted just outside of the campground here. Not sure if it was a black or a grizzly. And also some deer were in the campground, probably looking around to nibble on stuff around the tents. So I'm gonna call it a night and we'll talk to you in the morning. Well, good morning, day three, and we're just about to leave 50 Mountain. Welcome to Winter Wonderland. It started snowing through the night, and I think it's going to be a wet day today. We're heading to Granite Park, and uh, we have a bit of a stiff climb out of the gate right away, and then we have a long downhill, and from there, a beautiful walk. Hopefully, the weather's going to help out a little bit. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful walk between here and Granite Park. This is called the Cattle Queen Undercutting. It's a pretty impressive spot. So long story short, we hiked from 50 Mountain to Granite Park Chalet Campground and it snowed all day and everything is wet. So we ended up in the Granite Park Chalet to dry off, warm up, and debated about getting a room, which isn't cheap, but they had no rooms available. So, so anyway, we're gonna sleep the night away in the tool room here behind the chalet. Better than nothing, and it'll keep us dry for the night. Talk to you tomorrow. Well, good morning. Day four, and the adventure continues. So yesterday, I didn't have the camera out very much. It snowed on us all day. It snowed in the middle of the night, the night before. Continued all day and turned to wet snow later on in the afternoon. So things were a mess. We figure probably anywhere from 8 to 12 inches of snow through the day. We were going to camp down in Granite Park campground below the chalet and decided to try and hit the chalet itself. No rooms were available and they gave us the opportunity to sleep in the tool room. So four of us, four of us fit into a 
probably an eight foot by six foot space and uh, spent the night there. My sleeping pad has developed a hole in it and I slept on nothing but the concrete floor, so had a rough night. One of the hikers, they're heading down to Many Glacier today and then out, and he gave me his sleeping pad. He's from Arizona, so a shout out to Nico from Arizona, and I'll be getting his uh, sleeping pad back to him in the mail after I get home. So today we have a fairly easy climb up to Swift Current Pass. It's about a 120 meter elevation gain, something like that. And then a beautiful walk down to Many Glacier itself and the campground. I have no idea how old this tin bucket is, but I have to wonder if it wasn't part of the infamous Night of the Grizzlies back in 1967. I don't think this bucket is that old. Check out the book. It's a great book. It's a story about a grizzly bear attack that happened here at the Granite Park Chalet below the chalet down in the campground. A young lady lost her life back in 1967, and the same night in another valley, another grizzly attack took the life of another young lady. This is our first trail junction sign of the day, heading up over Swift Current Pass. And this is the trail back to the chalet. John's coming up now. And I forgot to mention that just as I got out of the tool room about 7.30 this morning, there was a pack of what I thought were coyotes very nearby, yipping and howling. And then we talked about it in the chalet with others and somebody thought it might have been a pack of wolves. But anyway, regardless, it was a pretty cool way to start the day. And then here's our sign, and we're heading to Mini Glacier Campground. That's the first view we've had in, a, in about a day and a half. The sun just broke through, the fog just lifted, and she is beautiful. Look at this view. And I think we're just in awe because we haven't had a view for two days. And look at what we came out of. We're just coming down from there. There's some other folk coming down as well. We're gonna head over Scott's head there, and then we're gonna do some switch back and over on that side. And then you can see the trail down below. We're gonna go past Bullhead Lake on the left side down there. And then further on is Red Rock Lake. So we just stopped for water here, Scott and I, and we were just starting to hike again, and he spotted them. And here they are. Welcome to Glacier National Park. We're just about to head around the corner here and then down the switchbacks, down toward the lakes. We think that's Stuart and John down below. Strolling around the corner and look at this. Pretty easy to see the snow level, the line, from yesterday's snow. And at the chalet, I believe we were just short of 6,700 feet. Here's a pretty fresh looking pile of bear scat full of huckleberries. We just met a day hiker heading up to the pass and to the chalet. And <laughs> he said it rained all, all day yesterday. And we were telling him about the snow that we walked through all day and he laughed. He said, yeah, you know, you got to have a certain amount of brain damage to be a hiker. <laughs> this area keeps reminding me of hole in the wall the more I look at it. If you've never been there, check it out.
Well, we've arrived. This is the junction to the campground. And we'll head over there, pitch the tents, go for dinner. Well, we had a pretty good day today coming down from Granite Park Chalet down to Many Glacier. We got the tents set up here in the campground. This is the automobile campground here at Many Glacier. And we just finished supper over at the restaurant at the Swift Current Inn. We're going to call it a day in a little bit here. Sun setting behind the ridge and it's going to be dark here in a bit. So we'll talk to you in the morning. B5. Well, good morning, it's day five, and we're just about to leave Many Glacier after a nice night here in the automobile campground. We've had breakfast at Swift Current Inn, and we're about to head up Wilbur Creek Valley. From there, we'll turn and head up Ptarmigan Creek Valley, and then we'll do some serious switchbacks up to the Ptarmigan Tunnel. That'll be the highlight for today. Might be the highlight for the entire hike. It's awesome up there. John, the cameraman, him and I have done this twice through the tunnel albeit the other direction, so today is different. It's gonna be a nice change. From there, we're gonna head down to Elizabeth Lake, and we're staying there tonight at the campsite at the foot of Elizabeth Lake. We are not alone. What a beautiful morning. This gives you a good idea of what we came down from yesterday. You don't often see that on the middle of a trail. So here's the trail junction with the Iceberg Lake Trail, which I've heard is very, very nice. And we're heading up now to the tunnel. And there's just a warning here about the trail and the rock slide near the tunnel. Well, we made the turn now and we're huffing and puffing up Ptarmigan Creek Trail. This is a bit of a climb here. It's a little bit of a steep stretch to get away from the other valley and pretty soon I think we're going to get some good views. I was just admiring the cliff face up above us and it's always neat to see trees like that growing on a ledge. Every now and then you should turn around and look. Here's a nice little cascade below the lake, Ptarmigan Lake. And pretty soon we'll get to Ptarmigan Lake and then above that, Ptarmigan Tunnel. Don't know if you can see it up there, but the tunnel is up there, Ptarmigan Tunnel. And that's where we are headed. You can see all the switchbacks leading up to it. A little better look at the trail. So we're going to continue past Ptarmigan Lake here. And we're going to contour across the flank of the ridge and then up we go up the switchbacks here we go up so there's a big sweeping switchback over to the right and then another one back to the left and then another one back to the right and the tunnel and here's the beginning of the switchbacks the first one Scott and Stuart are just nearing the end of the first switchback. John is getting close. And then we'll head up the second one, up the slope. Here's a good idea of what we're looking at. So we're now heading up switchback number two. And we've come up switchback number one from way over there above the lake. So I'm at the end of the second switchback. And now beginning the third and last one, you can see the trail heading up to the entrance to the tunnel. Well, we're nearing the top. That'll be the end of climb number two on the hike, the big climbs. We have another one Sunday morning up over Stony Indian Pass. So this is the entrance to the tunnel that we're coming up on and what I would call a patio. So here we go. And 
there's the tunnel and down the other side something incredible so this is the ptarmigan tunnel this is the third time that i've walked through this thing it's the only trail tunnel in glacier national park and was constructed in 1930 it's about 250 feet long it was built by a crew using jackhammers from each end and then dynamite was used to blast the rock out of the tunnel and that rock was used to build retaining walls along the trail on each side of the tunnel. There are really steep drop-offs along the trail on each side. There's a heavy iron door at each end that got put in, I think in the 1970s, and are closed for most of the year, except for July, August, and September. And then you come out to what I would call another patio on this side, and then this is the view down. absolutely spectacular so 15 years ago John and I came up out of that valley and we came up that trail and for the last probably half hour of the climb you can see where you're going you can see this tunnel entrance easier than the other one so pretty amazing to think that almost 100 years ago this tunnel was built so this is the last good view overlooking Ptarmigan Lake it's Friday of the Labor Day weekend so Glacier Park is busy Lots of people up here. So you can see off in the distance, the plains. And there really are no foothills around here. It's just plains and then mountains, big ones. A lot of snow over there, on that mountain over there. And that would have been from two days ago. This is Elizabeth Lake that we're going to head down to. We're going to head down to the far end, the foot of Elizabeth Lake. And that is where we'll camp tonight. And this is our trail for the next 20 minutes or half hour. Absolutely amazing, the engineering here. So there's the entrance to the tunnel and we're going to pan back here and we're going to swing around to where we're going down. This is just so amazing, this walk. Down, down, down we go. If you're heading the other way, up to the tunnel, pretty easy to see your route for the next 15 or 20 minutes. So we're continuing down and we're getting a little bit better view of Elizabeth Lake down below. So way across the valley, that's Helen Lake over there. And Scott was just saying that there's a campsite at the shore of the lake. That might make a nice hike one day. This might be the last good view of Elizabeth Lake before we get into the trees up ahead. So we're just coming up on a trail junction with the trail from Poya Lake. And this comes up over Red Gap Pass. John and I and another buddy and my son hiked this years ago. And we went up from Many Glacier to Poya Lake, stayed the night there, then came down to this spot, and then went up through the tunnel back to Many Glacier. A nice one-nighter. Well, I figured it was time for a joke. Years ago, famous playboy Hugh Hefner managed to successfully stop an order of monks from operating a business on his property. The police forced the friars to close down their stall, which was just outside the playboy mansion where they had been selling flowers. Said one friar, well, if it was anyone else, we might have gotten away with it, but unfortunately, only Hugh can prevent florist friars. Here's a great view of Elizabeth Lake as we're getting close to the switchbacks and starting down. We have about three kilometers from this spot, so about two miles. Here's a little bit of a view of the lake as we get closer. All right, there she is, Elizabeth Lake peeking through the trees.
And this is the campsite. These are the food lockers here at Elizabeth Lake. And Scott's just checking stuff out. So there's the two food lockers for everybody here. Who would need a can opener in the backcountry? You bring your tuna? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. That looks anyway, I'm, good. Just, I'm just getting organized for uh, breakfast that tomorrow. That's good. Yeah, that's, that's dinner tonight. I think. Back to the map. So the food prep area is just over here. And we're talking about the food lockers here, which is great. Except we don't think there's enough food lockers here for everybody. I think there's five sites here. And there are four of us in our own site. So if there's 20 people here camping tonight, there's no way there's going to be enough room in there for all the food. We'll see what happens. Anyway, lake is just over here. It's a breezy, breezy day here. Well, it's nearing the end of a great day. Uh, such a great trail up through the Ptarmigan Tunnel and back down to the lake here. We've been talking for the past hour or so with a CDT through hiker. He's got two more days on the trail and he'll finish at Waterton. Pretty neat to hear stories from his journey so far. Anyway, we're gonna wrap things up. We got about another hour of daylight and then we'll be jumping into the tents. So we'll talk to you in the morning. Well, good morning, it's day six. We're just about to have breakfast. What a beautiful morning. We've got a nice walk today, a little bit different than yesterday. Yesterday, we were looking down at the views. Today, we're gonna to be looking up, valley bottom walking today. We're gonna to start by leaving the campsite here at Elizabeth Lake, and then we're gonna head down the Belly River drainage to a little side trail to Dawn Mist Falls. From there, we're gonna contour around the end of Cosley Ridge. We're going to ford the end of Cosley Lake and then go along Cosley Lake and Glens Lake, and we'll have lunch probably somewhere along the way there, and then we'll make it to the head of Glens Lake where we'll camp tonight. We just bumped into a roving park ranger back there, a young guy, and of course he wanted to check the permit. And of course JJ had it stuffed on the bottom part of the brain, not the top part, like I had it a couple days ago. So we had to stop for a few minutes, chat with him. He checked everything out, gave us some information. He's on his way up to the tunnel, and I think he's gonna be busy for the next hour or two with everybody at Elizabeth Lake. There's quite a crowd back there. This is Dawn Mist Falls, just off the trail. This just shows you what the trail is like here. We're uh, approaching Cosley Lake. We'll be there probably another hour or so maybe, and then we'll ford the lake. There's a lake and there's a view. Cosley Lake, so we're gonna go across the corner of it here. Pretty easy today. And here we go, this should be nice and refreshing. Oh yeah. Here comes the intrepid Scott. And here he comes, that kaput guy. <laughs> so here's a junction just past the ford here and that's back to Elizabeth Lake. Yeah. So now we're going to head up the Mokawanis River Valley. We're going to skirt the edge of Cosley Lake and then we're going to skirt the edge of Glens Lake to the campsite at the head of the lake. Here we're getting nice little glimpses of Cosley Lake as we walk along. Here's a nice view of Cosley Lake. The trail kind of swings up away from the lake for a ways, so nice to get down here. Ferns along the trail. I think that's the first time we've seen them on the trail. We'll go this way.
Well, I have the chance, I want to give a shout out to my buddy John with No H. So John was the one that got us the permit for this hike way back in March. I asked about 12 guys to help me out by applying for the permit in the lottery process and four of them were lucky. John was the earliest candidate. He was, I think, on day four of what I think was a three-week process. So he was able to get us exactly what I wanted. And John, with an H, and I hiked this route, like I've said several times already, 15 years ago, but in the opposite direction. So we had a pretty good idea of which campsites we wanted to stay at this time. So thanks, John, with no H. This is the Glens Lake Foot Campground. We could have stayed here, but I wanted the Glens Lake Head for an easier day tomorrow because it's going to be long enough tomorrow. Just going to check it out. Here's a paw print from a bear, probably a black bear. Uh, black bear paws and grizzly bear paws are quite a bit different. So somewhere down there is a lake. <laughs> Unfortunately, the trail is not. Well, we have arrived. So we're going to go check it out and pitch the tents and have some lunch. Well, this is a pretty nice spot for a campground. That's Pyramid Peak at the end of the lake. Mount Merritt is overlooking the lake across the way. And we went in for a swim in the lake. Nice refreshing swim. That felt pretty good on a warm day. Here's another view of Pyramid Peak. And tomorrow, just going to show you the route that we're going to take tomorrow. So we're going to go up and it's kind of in shelves or steps. So we're going to go up there. You can see the water. And we're going to go up there and then we're going to go up above it to another shelf. And from what I remember 15 years ago, there's some huge cliff faces surrounding the trail with some great waterfalls coming down. We are all set up in our tent site and I just wanted to show you the tents that we have on this hike. So here's our cozy little tent site. John and I decided to take my Six Moon Designs Lunar Duo tent. I was told by the park staff that we could probably put four single person tents in a site and I had doubts about that. So I'm glad we brought this one because there's no way we could put four tents into this campsite. So this is the tent that John and I are sharing and Scott over there has the Durston X-Mid one person tent and Stuart over here has his mountain equipment company tent. When I put together the team I realized that we had three great singers wow. on the team and one that, does, that doesn't sing. So uh, we have Stuart Howe who is an opera singer, John Langman sings in a choir and Scott sings in a choir too. So without further ado I am extremely proud to present the Glacier Trio. <laughs> The Glacier okay. Trio. All oh, right. A long, long time ago, I can still remember how that music used to make me smile. I can't remember if I cried when I read about his widowed bride, but something touched me deep inside the day the music died. And they were singing bye-bye, this American pie. Drove my Chevy to the levee, but the levee was dry. And good old boys were drinking whiskey and rye, singing this'll be the day that I die. This'll be the day that I die. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's our work tomorrow. And once we're up there, it's pretty much all downhill to the campsite and to Goat Haunt and to Waterton. Well, we had a really great day today. Really nice day. Easy walk from Elizabeth Lake to Glens Lake where we are tonight. We have a nice little campsite right beside the lake, so it's a great spot. Uh, I think we're going to have uh, maybe some dessert, some hot chocolate, and then we'll call it a night and we'll talk to you in the morning. Well, good morning. It's day seven. Not a great night's sleep. 
I dreamt that Scott got run over by a moose and I got kicked in the face by John. Uh, wait a minute, I did get kicked in the face by John. Anyway, what a beautiful, beautiful morning. We're about to have breakfast and then get packed up and away we go. September 1st and we're well into the climb up to Stony Indian Pass. Last night was uh, an interesting night to say the least. I dreamt that Scott got run over by a moose and I got kicked in the face. Oh that's right, John did kick me in the face. The campsites here, the, the trail is awesome. The route is awesome. The, the tent sites are crap. They're, uh, they're all sloped. My sleeping bag through the night moved probably about a foot, which doesn't sound like much, but when you're in a small tent with another guy, uh, I think what happened was my, my face was right beside John's foot and he rolled over in the middle of the night and, <laughs> and I woke up. Half an hour after we climbed into the tent, I thought I heard Scott snoring in the tent, in his tent next to ours. I realized it wasn't Scott snoring. It was more like a snorting noise or uh, uh, like a woofing noise. Um, so Stuart got up and went over to the next campsite, talked to the folks there, and the, uh, the vote was that it was a moose that had come in along the shore of the lake, and our campsite was right beside the lake. So with the willows there, I think it just crashed through the willows, ran past everybody's tents, and this morning ended up at the end of the lake. Today we have a climb up past Atsina Lake and then further up to Stony Indian Pass where I'm sure we'll take a bit of a break overlooking Stony Indian Lake. From there it's a steep descent down to the Waterton River Valley and from there we'll head back to Kootenai Lake and spend the night. This would be Atsina Lake. The trail swings around to the right over there and then climbs. Still huffing and puffing up the climb to Stony Indian. So we are heading up there onto that plateau and then we are heading further up there towards Stony Indian Pass. Always take the time to look back and if you look really carefully, I'm going to show you where we camped last night, just in from that point in the trees there. Here's some bear diggings right along the trail. Could be for anything, roots, ground squirrels, maybe marmots. We're just about to get into the final push to the pass, Stony Indian Pass. It's a series of switchbacks heading up to the pass. Pretty nice view, we're nearing the top of Stony Indian Pass. There's a nice big cairn marking the summit. So this is Stony Indian Pass. And the rest is all downhill. There's Stony Indian Lake below. This trail is going to go down and around to the right and then it skirts the lake. Stony Indian Camp is at the far end of the lake. And then we're going to continue down into the Waterton River Valley. It's interesting to see a bit of an alluvial fan down in the lake below there. Way down below there, you can see a single hiker hiking along the lake. Yeah. So just before heading down from Stony Indian Pass, which is a big descent down to the Waterton Valley, I'm going to snug up my laces. Heading down is so, so hard on the toes and on the feet. The toes take a real beating. Well, we're just nearing the lake. That didn't take long. Just a really well-engineered, well-thought-out trail coming down here. 
So we're going to skirt the edge of the lake for a few minutes and then we'll be at Stony Indian Campground. John says 20 minutes from the pass down to here. This is Stony Indian Lake Campground and from here if you're heading up over Stony Indian Pass you look at that and you go how the hell are we going to go up there and half an hour later you're at the pass. Well, this is our junction. This is the end of our loop. So we came in here on Monday, went up to 50 Mountain Campground, and now we're back at this spot and we're heading out to Kootenai Lake for tonight and then out to Goat Haunt tomorrow. Well, we've returned to the Kootenai Lakes Trail and we're gonna head in shortly. We just met up with Stuart and Scott. They're gonna head for the boat. There's a boat from Goat Haunt back to Waterton and they have a big Yellowstone hike coming up. So they're hoping to get the boat at 5.30. So hopefully they can get on the boat tonight. Well, we've arrived back at the campsite. We're just checking it out. Things are pretty quiet. So I think John and I might have first choice of campsites. This is my favorite backpacking meal that I have. Interestingly, one of my backpacking meals, whose name will remain nameless, has flavor listed as one of the ingredients. Hmm. Well, just a quick wrap on day seven. Just another great day out here in Glacier. I loved the waterfalls on the hike up to Stony Indian Pass. And then the view down onto the lake, Stony Indian Lake, was awesome. The walk down was pretty steep, but we made it, and uh, John and I are camped now here at Kootenai Lake, and tomorrow we're going to hike out to Goat Haunt. Well, good morning. Day 8, and the last day on the trail. We have a short walk back to the main trail, the Waterton Valley Trail, and then from there, back to Goat Haunt, and from there, we'll hop on the boat back to Waterton Town. We're just walking back past the Goat Haunt Ranger Station and this completes our foot journey and now we just wait for the boat. And here comes our ride. National Park Service, so this is my fun retirement job just for the summer. <laughs> yeah, I'm figuring it out. There's a bear over here on shore, and I believe I saw a cub with it as well. So keep your eyes peeled right there. The, there they are. There. There's right down. Oh, two cubs. Oh, look at that. Three bears. That's a great sighting. <laughs> this is another one there. See that? Three cubs. Wow. Four bears. Look at that. Last year was an incredible berry crop and so the females had quite a few cups this year. It was 29 Celsius this day, so upper 80s Fahrenheit, a warm day. And I think Mama Bear was just looking for a nice place to cool down. What an awesome hike. It was great 15 years ago and just as good this time. Well, day three sucked with the snow and it's too bad because that trail between 50 Mountain and Granite Park is really good. Probably the best part of the entire hike. Well, Ptarmigan Tunnel is pretty good too. The North Circle is easily in my top five hikes that I've done over the years. It's amazing. I want to thank John, Stuart and Scott for hiking with me this week. And I want to thank you for hiking along with us I hope you enjoyed it.
view from the tunnel. <laughs> Is that on video? Such a great trail heading up to the, t the oh, I can't even talk tonight. Time just, for a joke. Just a second. Thought it was time for a joke. Okay, I don't think I was starting. Okay, I'm done. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Poetry in motion. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs>